And that's how you time travel. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back. Glad you made it. It's another social production. We're doing it on Wednesday, October the 9th, 2024. If it's your first time, buckle up, buckle down. Where can you find these videos on Instagram? Follow me there. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch the full length videos, check out patreon.com slash Rob If you'd like to fiscally, financially support the show. Anywhere you're tuning in from, whether it's Canada, down south in the United States, further down south, Mexico, further down south than that, South America, over there in Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Australia, Senegal, Portugal, France, over there in uh, Zimbabwe. What's going on? Walk one to the underwaters, uh, walk one to the ones uh, hovering uh, on hovercrafts, on ships, on yachts, uh, on the beach, over there in your conda, over there in your house, your semi-detached house, your semi-codependent detached house, your totally detached house, your hut, your, your little tent, because you're, you're a nomad, or you're like a temporary nomad, you're, you're into camping. Whatever, whatever you're doing, I hope you're safe and sound. I hope you're having fun, whatever it is that you're up to. Let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. It's Wednesday, we're halfway through the week. Let's get a sip of this shit right here and get it going together. <sighs> I'll say this, let's start with the basics. Let's start with whatever's been on your mind, whatever's been on my mind. Whatever is on, on, on all of our minds, together. Oh, good to be alive, first and foremost. But, uh, you know, if you're wondering out there, you're like, how do I die from a cough? How do I die from a cough? It's very simple. A lot of times people are like, oh, I don't know. It's just a little minor cough that I got. But you want to elevate it to the next step. Uh, start by wheezing a little bit. Start by <laughs> a little bit of that. Start by covering your mouth and then coughing little by little. And then remove your remove your hand from your mouth. Just really belt it out. Let's let's get it in there. <laughs> let's get it in there. You really start coughing, and you're like, okay, well that's the first step. I've been there before. I've been you know living uh, some time on this planet, and I've coughed. But how do I die from a cough? You want to take momentum. You want to build upon it. Keep on coughing. A lot of people will be like, you know what? Are you thirsty? Do you need a little bit of a drink of water? Do you need to excuse yourself from the room? Leave the classroom, leave the boardroom, leave the living room, leave the family gathering, maybe go clear your throat in the back and then come back. But you're like, no, 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 that's been done. We've, we've done, done, we've done, did that. We've done, did that to the, we've done it, we did it together. And you're like, no, I want to die from coughing. And that's fantastic. This is how you do it. Sit wherever you are, stand wherever you are, continue coughing. Uh, even when, once it's stopped, I, I, do not get a drink. Do not moisturize your throat. A lot of people make that mistake. They're like, oh, the best thing to remedy a cough is a nice hot cup of whatever you prefer. Tea, coffee, a blend of mix, a mix of, a mix of both. Maybe a little bit of Hennessy, maybe a little bit of whiskey in your uh, Irish coffee. But, but forget all that. Keep it dry. You want to keep it dry. Keep coughing. Eventually, you want to start uh, hurting. If it starts hurting, that, that means you're on the right track. If it starts, if mucus starts coming out your throat or your nostrils, again, you're on the right track. Continue coughing for about five to ten minutes and then continue on coughing a little bit even more than that Just continue coughing for about half an hour by this time you should you should feel a little bit of swelling in your throat and your Sinuses should be just your your sinuses should just be filled with mucus and bodily fluids God knows where they're coming from but continue coughing keep coughing for about an hour or two by then hopefully if you've continuously kept on coughing and you've not remedied this situation with any sort of liquid, you should hopefully start to see some bleeding from your throat. That's a good sign. You're on your way. Uh, don't give up though, because you know, a lot of times people might see blood and they're like, okay, well, I'm done. That's, that's it for me. I'm going to just wrap it up and call it a day. Uh, if you want to half ass shit, okay, fine. So be it. But continue coughing. If you're the, if you're the type that's like, you know what, I'm going to go all the way, then let's do it. Keep coughing, more blood, more fluid should come out of your throat. By this time, there should be a small little puddle gathering around you. People should be alarmed. Whoever's next to you should be stepping away, giving you some room, okay? Continue coughing, and eventually what I'd like you to do, a lot of times, again, people are like, oh, that's a little bit of bodily fluid. That's a little bit of blood. Do I stop now? No. What you want to eventually do is to be able to cough up an organ. Those are, vo those are vital signs that you're doing something correct. Those are the signs. If you see a little colon, just, you know, if you see a little bit of, you know, an, append an appendix, which is not even needed these. If you cough up an appendix, you're on the right track. 
eventually you do want to cough up every internal organ from your body through, through your mouth and just, just put it out there. Just set it aside and continue coughing. Your intestine, your kidneys, your lungs, cough it all out. Uh, your blood vessels, cough all those out too. Eventually you want to, you know, that's, you've emptied out the majority of your internal bodily organs, which are great, but now we want to get rid of the flesh inside. So keep on really accentuating that cough. Keep on really just going from the diaphragm, but that too should also be on the floor next to you. Keep on coughing. Your, your muscles, your bones should now come out of your mouth and just land somewhere within the vicinity. There's a pile, there's a lot of blood by now, but you are still, you know, committed to it. So keep going until you eventually pass out. Make sure beforehand, prepare. Always grab a broomstick and a little, you know, dustpan next to you so that others can clean up the mess. But those are essentially the basics of how to go from a regular cough to full-blown death right in front of everybody and that's how you do it so that's if you're like oh i've never been taught how to you know cough and die well there you go now you can do it so don't hold back don't be thinking oh i'm gonna put limits on myself and i'm gonna just you know give them a regular cough you know go full-blown cough start bleeding a little bit start making a difference together one step at a time we can do it. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're here once again, and it is Wednesday. And I'll get right into it if we can, if we may together. You know, a lot of times people are like, okay, uh, well, mechanical bulls are fun. And I'm like, hell yeah, they are. But what else is fun? Uh, whores are fun. And then I said to myself, well, if people like whores and if people like mechanical bulls, why not put them to... Why not, why not combine the best of both words and, and give the people what they deserve, what they really truly want? Mechanical whores, introducing mechanical whores. These whores are basically anatomical replicas of the human body. It comes in male and female. And people, th these things can be set up in your local bars, your, you know, pool, uh, your, your pool halls, if you will, your, uh, your uh, you know, bowling alleys, if you like, wherever you find little, little, you know, fun activities, little bar games, or just, you could even get them, you could even get them for your household. If you've got like a game room in your household, you could set aside a little bit of space. It doesn't take up too much room, but it's a mechanical whore. Again, shaped like a human body, whether male or female, you can get both male or female. What you do is you either climb it yourself or have your guests, your friends, family members gather around. You climb on top, you mount it. If you're a male, it comes with obviously a vagina. You insert your peen into the mechanical whore batch. You put in a couple of quarters and it starts vibrating, gyrating, shaking, and trying to throw you off simultaneously, trying to make you come. Whoever obviously comes last wins or whoever doesn't get thrown off the mechanical whore is the clear winner. Same thing for the ladies, except it's a little bit different. Uh, and again, male, female, you can, you, can, you can switch around. The female version of the mechanical whore is, of course, just a replica of a human female body, you know, uh, with, a, with a penis. So it's not a, it's a, it's a replica of a human male. I, I should have said that, but it doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. It's a replica of the human uh, bodily anatomy. And there you go. It's a mechanical penis. And you can get, you, you climb on it, uh, whether you're male or female, you ride it and you try to, one, see how long you can last from coming. To see how long it can last before it throws you off. And this is gonna be, I think this is, you know, there's a lot of room for growth in terms of sports, entertainment, overall, just a good, wholesome family time. And if you're like, man, I just went to a bunch of slap, uh, you know, slap fighting competitions, what else can I do to entertain myself and my family and my friends and still get my money's worth? Uh, go to the local bar, go to the local pub, support a local business, and ride the mechanical whore. And again, this is not just, you know, it's fun and games, of course, so you could just be like, oh, I wonder how long I'm going to last the first time. You know, that's just for newbies. If you take it to the, you know, ladder levels, if you will, you can actually make this into a sport. Uh, globally speaking, I see the trajectory of this sport really taking over. And there is how much is the room for growth? 10,000 billion X is the, it's, it's, it's unlimited growth. It's really unlimited growth because not only is it entertainment, not only is it healthy, it also enhances your libido. And also if you're like, man, I have had the worst, you know, I, I, I just lose my balance all the time. Get on the mechanical whore, fam. Get on the mechanical whore. Work on your core a little bit because all you got is your core. And that's, 
basically one of the man if i if i knew that like way back in the day it's all all of it is just core mostly if you're like concerned about health fitness longevity uh longitude latitude you know flexibility agility uh, uh reduction addition subtraction if you're into all of that get on the mechanical whore uh, please do wipe them off after you're finished. That's one of the differences between you. Like this is pretty much the mechanical bolt. No, it's not. There's a lot of different things. There's the again male genitalia and female genitalia that is installed on these mechanical whores, and there is a cleaning up aspect to it, which you do not see, which you do not need with a mechanical bolt. But that's like back. That's that's from the what the sixties, fifties, eighties, nineties. That's like way back in the day. Uh, so please do make sure you clean up after yourselves because we don't want anybody, you know, leaving any sort of bodily fluids nowadays. It's just you want to you want to maintain a cleanly uh, uh, facility. You want to you don't you don't want to you don't want to make it so that you yourself are catching something or are giving something to somebody else. Uh, yeah. So ladies, if it's that time of the month, you're like, can I get on it? Absolutely. As long as you again bring your rag, wipe it off, just the spit shine at least on top of the facility. Just just to, you know you know be mindful be courteous don't just be like it's only my mechanical whore it's not just your mechanic it's kind of like a local you know neighborhood mechanical whore think about it that way and it's not yours it's everybody's it's a communal mechanical whore and the money raised from it could either go to the bu the the bar the pub uh help raise awareness for whoever needs to get some awareness out there and there you go increasing in libido Creating a whole new sport that's going to be a global sensation. Working on people's cores. Bringing relationships together. Making relationships faster and stronger. So if you're like, man, my wife has got hips that she just rides me and I can't. And she throws me. We ride the mechanical whore. Next thing you know, your, your wife's regular hips are no longer thrusting you in midair. And you're going, to have to, you're going to have to go home and remove all those trampolines that you laid out for safe landing forget about it it's uh mechanical horse city all day every day that's actually the name of the establishment that we're thinking of you know it's kind of like the chuck e cheese but for adults it's essentially you you know it's yeah mechanical horse city that's the name of the joint so where can you find them they'll they'll be in your neighborhood soon we'll make sure of it i put this bell on you Cause you're mine. I put this bell on you. Cause you are mine. I put a spell on you. Cause you're mine. I put this bell on you because you're mine. A lot of times people lose their significant others, family members, friends, acquaintances simply because people are walking around bellless, which is ugh, like how do you deal with that? So I came up with a whole new idea of how to go about maintaining relationships, friendships, uh, you know, familial bonds, make them a little bit stronger, introducing bells that go around people's necks from now. And if you put a bell around your loved one's neck, you hear them coming and going. No longer will you have to yell across the room, back, hey, you know, where are you? I'm upstairs. I'm in the bathroom getting ready for the night. You don't want it because you'll she'll walk around jingle jangle with the bell around her. And you know, she's upstairs getting ready, fam. You don't need to yell Becky and you don't need to reach for your phone. Communicating with phones is so disgustingly ugly between couples, between families, between friends. Because if, if, if you're in the same facility, having to resort to a phone to text and be like, do you want to go? What do you want to have for dinner tonight? Text, put a bell around their neck. That way, you know, they're close by, which means what? You can have conversations face to face. You can, again, you go to a meeting, get a bunch of co-workers together and you're like man i'm always this 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 you know this office building is huge i don't know where john is i don't know where you know lisa's gone to where are they where is everybody it's it's almost lunchtime let's grab lunch and you're just looking for everything god knows where anybody is right now could be in the bathroom could be in the fax machine room if you've got a designated fax machine or if you don't well, i don't know if <laughs> I don't know if that's the kind of company you want to stay at that if you don't got a designated fax machine room you know because it's 2020 20, almost five bitch get a fax room but nonetheless put a bell around their neck and that way you know they're yours and you are then that way they could reciprocate they could put a bell on you that way whenever you 
walking around. So, like your kids, your newborn baby, instead of them just like wandering, just bug eye wandering in the sky, where is da da? Da da da, you know, this drool, your drooling baby, where is da da? Trying to get him to talk. You don't need to talk, baby, until you can form proper sentences, that is. Put a bell around your neck so that baby can see you or at least hear you. Jingle, jangle, jingle. Oh, da da, yeah, it's da da. That's right. And you're like, well, what if all the bells sound the same? How do I know who it is? Well, then you're, you shut up then because you're ruining a good thing then, aren't you? It's just a matter of hearing a bell and knowing somebody near and dear to you is close by. It's not so much that who is it that's close and who is near and dear, you know? Could be a stranger, but the stranger one day, lover the next, Lo lover one day, codependent relationship the next. Codependent relationship, one minute. Shared bank accounts, the next shared bank accounts. An evening. Buying a house together because you can't afford it on your own. And all thanks to the bell around your neck, I put this bell on you because you're mine. Yeah, don't lose your family, friends, and acquaintances. Simply put a bell on them, please. That's the, that's the, that's the least you could do. Ladies and gents, if you're wondering to yourself, you're like, oh, you know, I just, I just gave birth, or, or, my, or my baby boo, my female companion, lover, wife, lady gave birth to our baby and our baby is ugly. Oh no, you've been waiting for like nine months and you got an ugly baby, which totally sucks, which is ugh, cause everybody else is going around. Oh, look at my cute baby, look at my cute baby. Come take a look at my cute baby. They'll say that, they're annoying and you can't join them and be annoying with them. But guess what? Uh, you, there's a ton of places where you can actually switch your babies. If you're not happy with the way your baby looks, uh, you know, try to switch them. A lot of people don't do that. A lot, try to switch them. Right, the earlier you switch them, the easier the process of switching babies. At the hospital, switch a baby. If you see a better looking baby than your baby, they're all the same. They're all just take, just swap them around. If you're like, man, I'm, my baby's kind of looking like, you know, got weak wrists. Got that ugh, weak wrist baby, you know, and, a, and, a, and an extra long forehead. Ugh, you know, get a baby that's kind of like, you know, toned. Get a baby with definition. Get a baby that's kind of like, not saying it, but saying it, daddy, I'm going to be in the NFL. That kind of, you know what, but just swap them quickly. No one will notice. Because, yeah, yeah, who says you have to carry around your own baby? What it, what it, you just gave birth to it. What makes it, you know what I mean? Just switch them around at the... A lot of people are like, I'll opt for my own private room. That way I know I've got my family, my privacy. If you're not sure how that baby's gonna turn, get a, get a shared room, you know? Offer a, offer a, you know, hopefully the lady next to you is giving birth to a better looking baby. That way you can switch them around so you're not ending up with an uggo for an entire lifetime. Don't limit yourself, I'm just telling you, there's options. You're like, oh, I missed that boat. Well, don't worry, because I thought about this. Where else could you swap your baby? Honestly, if you put them in like preschool, like I don't know what age it starts at, like maybe three, four, whatever. On one day when you drop them off, don't pick them up. Pick up another baby. Pick up a way better looking baby than your baby. Done. Done. The good thing is that they don't remember much. Like babies, like, you know, if you get them like really early, they don't remember much. So that's the, go to, I recommend going to another country. Go to another country, drop off your baby, pick up another baby. They will never know, ever. Like, Maybe they'll know, like, maybe they're like, okay, if you're like, if you're like a fat, if you're like a white family or if you're like a black family and you're going out there and not getting like, you know, get something that blends in that's easier to maintain the, you know, storyline. But if you're going, if you're white or if you're black and you're going out there and like, you know, swapping your baby for like, let's say, a, I don't know, Southeast Asian baby, uh, there might be some questions, but also there's always what there's always ways around the story that you can always tell them who cares first of all like if they ever bring it up just be like who cares aren't you like you know aren't you happy you're living in this household so there's always that just shut the conversation down right there if they're really like adamant about finding out oh you guys are kind of looking different than i am like, 
you know, just swap your baby early though. That's what I say. Don't wait for, honestly though, if, if they're ugly and if they're like really dumb, you can always swap them later in life too. If you like wait a little bit, cause you never know. Cause it's hard, it's hard, it is hard to tell when they're early on. First few weeks is really hard to tell. But you don't want to wait too long. I'd say anywhere under like, anywhere under 20, anywhere under like 18, anywhere under 18, let's just say, yeah, anywhere under, because 18 above, they're going to probably like leave the household soon. <laughs> Not in this economy, right? <laughs> they're going to be holding on to those bad boys and bad gals for some time. So if you're like, man, I got to be stuck in this joint, with this uggo right here, swap them around right before the 18, because like that, by then you should know if this is going to be like, a, you know, is this a college university baby? Is this a hands-on, you know, practical bit? Is this a business mindset baby? Is this an athletic baby? And if, switch them. If you don't like it, switch it. There's no reason why parents should limit themselves. So the next time you go to grocery stores and you're like, man, that, that, that kid looks way better than my kid. Fucking athletic and shit. You know what I mean? Wearing a crop top, throwing the fucking football. You know? Maybe, maybe, you know, they won't know. They won't, as long as you feed them, I think that, that basically... Criteria is pretty much the same. It's standard. Just you know, try to you know, and you're like, what do I call them? Call them whatever you want to call them. They're your baby now. Call them whatever you want to call them. I don't see why. Yeah, they're like, oh, my name is you know, my my name is Chris. It's it's not. It's Dan. From now on, it's Dan. All right, Dan. Welcome to the family. This this is this is for the best. Do it early though. You don't want to like you yeah after twenty. I say it's it's over. You can't you can't swap your baby after twenty. You can't swap your adult babies. That is, unless you want to. I'm, I'm advocating that we should be able to. But again, let's start with the basics. Let's get everybody on board. You know, the, the earlier you get them swapped, the better it is. If you're not happy with it, please don't corner yourself. Don't put all that pressure on yourself. You're like, oh my God, a lifetime commitment of that face. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to suffer alone. You're not alone. We're in this together now. I put this spell on you cause you're mine. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, thank you for joining me. Of course, you're all wondering how else can I go about my day but enhance my underwear and gun experience, which is why we decided together to create the Gunderwear. Tired of just wearing your underwear and how to put your gun on separately? What if I told you that the Gunderwear is the best of both worlds but in one piece underwear and also guns and it comes for both males and females now granted you will get an extra bulge fellas who can't get an extra bulge with the already existing nicely you know sized bulge that you've got but nonetheless it's a little tiny gun it's not the most it's not like a it's not like a it's not like a 45 or anything it's like a probably it's working probably like a, like a 22 all right it's small but nonetheless it's still a gun it's still a gun right on your nuts it, it just you know comes perfectly you know strapped to the underwear and it's it's just as good as any other regular 22. you know what i'm talking about ladies same thing except now you will walk around with a bulge that you didn't have previously and we we work around that honestly uh i, I know to, in today's day and age it is a little bit more precarious going out there like who is it what is this what am i dealing with you might see a bulge and be a little bit resistant in terms of wanting to approach a lady. Fellas, I'm telling you, don't, because what you think it is, is it is not what it is. It's not, it's not a peen. She doesn't have a cock, dude. It's not everybody. It's a very small percentage of the population that's, you know, dealing with that situation. This is Gunderwear. She's probably just thinking, you know what? I need to, first of all, separate my badge from my pants or my skirt, so I'm a, I'm a clean lady. For one, but next thing you know, she's also what her mind's going off to wear safety and protection. What does that say? Keeper, winner. These are all the things that you should be looking for in terms of deciding whether or not to approach a lady or a fella. Because yes, are they again keeping their nuts separated from their pants and their inner thigh? Absolutely. But are they also protected? Should there be? Oh, I don't know. A random bear attack. Oh, look, it's a bear. I wish I had a gun. So many people have died because they didn't have a gun. Guess what? If you're wearing a gun to wear, you'll always be ready for a bear. Every territory is now your territory. Go into campgrounds and just leave your food all around you. No more putting it in a bag, you know, tying it up and then lifting it. 
get, do, 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 doing all sorts of arts and crap. Let me pull this garbage back up on a tr I gotta find a branch strong enough so that I could, you know, use a rope and pull this garbage back filled with my food up on the tr so that the bear can't get next thing you know, there's a bear cub climbing the tree next thing you know, you're trying to like poke the bear cub next thing you know, there's a giant bear mama coming with her vagina yelling at you in your hood. Guess what? If you're wearing a gun to wear, you don't have to worry about, oh, do I need to bring a shotgun? Do I need to bring a machete? Do I need to bring a little fork knife? Whatever. No, you don't. Because you got the gun over. Simply walk out there with your boots and your gun over and just aim it. Aim it at the bear and make yourself big. Big. Just big. Ugh. Gun to wear. Right there in its face. Just pop it out and let the bear know it's business time. It's your territory now. Let's say, you know, you're a store owner. Uh, the times have been, you know, rough businesses, small businesses are under a lot of pressure. You might be, you might be dealing with theft. You might be dealing with internal theft. It could be an inside job, man. It could be, you know, you're like, man, I keep walking I, every night. I'm trying to close the cash. Cash is just a little bit short. I wonder who it is, Jimmy. Handles the cash all day, every day. Guess what? If you go in there, guns are blazing. People will be a little bit, just be like, oh, maybe this is not a, maybe this is a hostile work environment. But if you go in there with a friendly gun to wear and nothing else, just make a little small talk and be like, hey, Jimmy, let's, for example, pretend there was a little bit of cash in the cash register and the cameras were a little bit shifty. They weren't working because we've not had enough money to supply ourselves with better cameras also, and we don't know who it is jimmy do you should do you have any idea who it is jimmy that might be skimming a little bit off, off the top of the cash register jimmy. and meanwhile you got your crotch right in its face but it's not any it's not like threatening or anything because it's underwear with a gun which is neither a gun or an underwear it's the, it's the newest it's the best of both worlds the gun underwear let's say you're walking down an alley in a dark, uh, beautiful summer evening, fall, winter evening, you've now just spent hours dancing with your lady friend or your, or your male friend. You know what I'm talking? Just dancing. Oh, we're down. I put this bell on you. There's music going on in the background. You've had drinks and you come out. And you're like, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened since staplers. And she's concurring. She's like, yes, this is the best thing that happened since staplers. And you both simultaneously reach in your pants pockets and reach out. You both have staplers. You're like, oh my God, you're infatuated with staplers too. And you high, you high five stapler each other. But next thing you know, all that good time comes to a screeching halt because there's a gang of hooligans who've been just nesting in the garbage bins. It's just coming out, maybe zombies. Maybe zombie do hooligans just, hey, we're gonna eat you face first. And then the other one's like, eat them badge first because badge first is way better. And you're like, how do these zombies know what's better? Do they even have taste buds, buds, buds? I put this spell on you. So if you had a bell around their neck already, you'd know they're in the neighborhood, fam. Fucking think about that shit right there. But don't worry, you forgot the bell, but luckily you've equipped yourself with the gunderwear. And you're like, bring it on, zombie hooligans. You strip down, butt naked. Show them the goods. <clears throat> right there. Gun, underwear, both at you. Staplers in either hand. Things are about to get a little bit messy. That's right. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gents, that... Uh, it's important that you protect yourself. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you should not put guns on your underwear. Have we had mishaps in the trial run? Did people, did a couple of people shoot themselves in the nads? Did we get a couple of complaints about safety? Uh, let me ask you this. Have you ever come across some people in your life that are just puss? Yeah, same here. So you know what? We're not gonna let a couple of complaints and a couple of lames out there just because now all my wiener has been shot and half my wiener is missing. It's like, quit complaining. Look at all the other happy people with the wieners out there. And nobody else is complaining except you all oh, shot the tip of my cock off. Well, they fucking don't then. You know? 
Oh, there's, oh, the, oh, the gun went inside my badge. Well, the gun shouldn't have gone inside you because if you wore the under, and the, the, if you wore the gun to wear correctly, the gun is always on the out. That's not ours. That's not our problem. That's your, that's a you problem. The gun is on the outside. Don't wear the, but it felt really good. Yeah, our guns do feel good inside your badge. Yeah, they do. They totally do. And we're not telling you to put guns up your badge, but if you are, remove the bullets, obviously. But then what's the point? Then just want you wear regular underwear, then just shove a dildo up your badge, then. If you're gonna do that, then. If you're gonna ruin it, if you're gonna try to badmouth a good product, then. If it's gonna be like that, then. I can't have babies anymore. You were, yeah, everything is. There's a reason for everything, isn't there? Maybe. How am I gonna pass off some offspring? Ah, why don't you start with a little bit of onspring? So yeah, did we have a little bit of trouble in terms of safety and getting like certified and FDA approved initially? Yes, but we outsourced, we went to other countries. It works, nine out of 10 times it works. And the other one time works too. It's not, maybe not in a preferred way, but it works. Our guns are always blasting off, huh. whether you want it or not. Sometimes it's actually, we kind of rig the gun so they just like go off at random. Because sometimes it's not even about letting people that you have a piece on you, but it's just about like catching yourself kind of off guard and like surprising yourself and others. Just, 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 you know, sure. You're like, oh, I got to walk in a room with just my underwear and nothing else so that people know I'm carrying a piece. And I no, just because we rigged some of the guns and you won't know which ones, maybe, maybe every other one. And it was just every once in a while, they just pop off. Just aim it towards like something else. Just like make sure the tip of the gun is not aimed towards you or your like inner thighs. Cause that like, we don't want to, we're not going to take responsibility for any sort of, you know, harm that may or may not come your way. Okay. So let's just get that out of the, you know, be responsible, but also be, be, be fun. Have, have fun. Be safe out there. Times are challenging, the economy is challenged. The economy is, you know, just a little bit, you know, that's what they say, the economy is challenged. But that's always the case, unless you're like, you know, fucking, if you got it going on, you got it going on. But to the, to the rest of the people, to the regs out there, just doing things, trying to make things happen one day at a time. I say this, you know, I looked at the market and I looked at ourselves and I said, you know what? So a ton of companies out there that are capitalizing on the renting aspect of things. And that's when I said to myself, well, my gosh, my goodness, gee golly. If people are renting their households and their cars to other people when they're not using it, because why would they, like, let's say, yeah, you're like, oh, I, got a, I got a house. I got two houses. You lucky son of a bitch. I got a cottage and a house. I, I can rent the cottage, live in the house, or rent the house, live in the cottage. I got one house. I'm gonna live in a tent, rent the house, live in a tent, rent the house, rent the house, travel somewhere cheaper to live off the rent money that I've rented. But, that, but that's if you've got a house. And you're like, I'll rent the car. I will take my precious car and I will rent it out to rando drivers with God knows what kind of driving. So I will rent out my car. You know, 21 year old renting my car to 20 years, just like shifting the gear back and forth. You come back, your car's all fucked up. It's worth every penny. I'll rent my car. I will make an extra dollar when I'm not using my car. Somebody else can have sex in the backseat of my car. That's right. So if I'm not going to have sex in the backseat of my car, somebody else should have backseat sex in the backseat of my car. For the backseat sex. is good. That's what the backseat's made for. It's original, that was the only reason why we had backseats. Back in 1927 when cars were first made, or whenever, they only had the front seats. And then eventually one day, somebody tried to have sex in the front seat and the front seat was not comfortable. Somebody got a, you know, somebody got a little gearbox stuck in their uterus. All of a sudden complaints start coming out. Next thing you know, back seats were invented. I may have had some to do with it personally, but I'm not here to take credit. That's not this kind of show. This is about you. It's about me. It's mostly about us coming together. The point is that I looked and I'm like, you can rent your house, you can rent your car. <laughs> what else can you rent when you're not using it? And I said, what don't I use a lot of times? What am I not using a lot of times? My penis, my penis. I'm not using it a lot of times. I noticed that. 
and you might find yourself in a situation where you're not using your penis a lot of time or your vag or your tits which is why i thought to myself yes there sure may be still today a little bit of stigma about selling your bodily parts but what about renting your bodily parts haha loophole city entering a new loophole for the peoples a loophole which has been created for the people who are not particularly keen on selling their body because that's got like ah you're selling your body judgment city Oh, judgy, judgy. Meanwhile, in the background, buying bodies or aspects of bodies. Doesn't matter. The point is that you can rent your cock or your badge or your tits and charge however you like because that's the thing. You own it, but if you're not using it, like if I'm like, if it's like between the hours of like, let's say 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I'm just like, let's say I'm just like, I'm just the regular 9 to 5 guy who does regular 9 to 5 things. I'm at the office. I could be sitting down at the office typing if that's what my job entails maybe i'm typing typing below below the desk below the desk i could be pantless i could be pantless and there could be somebody riding my cock and i could be making bank renting my cock not selling not selling again we do want to clarify not selling renting rent subletting really sublet is not mine it's not yours because it's only a vessel they say that you're occupied for some time who's is it anyway? It's mine, but I'm subletting it, you know. So that's the thing. And if you're like, yeah, I am a, I'm a gardener. I'm a gardener who likes to get her thumbs green. And I'm just on my hands and knees all day going through the, I'm on my knees all day, every day. And you know, to, to that I say, if you're already on your knees, if you got your hands and knees on the ground, you're working with dirt, you're working with, uh, you know, topography, you're working with fucking, you know, plants you know animal eating plants you're working with new strains of plants you're trying to come out with a new strand of weed you're trying to come up with a new strand of mushrooms you're trying to come up with whatever you're trying to you're trying to come up with the goods but you're already on your hands and knees you know who's not using your vagina you're not using your vagina you know who could be using your vagina a lot of people out there would be paying you know money not good but like money for your vagina and you can rent it out because you could be on your hands and knees just like, oh, I'm just digging dirt here. This is, I'm, this is me doing my thing from nine to five anyway. And I don't even, I don't even like, I'm, 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 I'm just minding my own business right here. Somebody could be pounding it from the back. You know, a couple of quick ones too, a couple of quick ones. You'd be, you'd be surprised as to how much extra scratch you could earn by simply renting your badge or your penis or your tits. I say that all the time. A lot of people are like, oh, I like to go to the beach and just sunbathe. And I like to get one of those like aluminum folder thingies that people hold to like, you know, get more sunburn on their face specific. I've seen people do that. So like rarely, not, not, not anymore. Not, there was a time period, like maybe a few decades ago, you, you saw people just be sitting and just, you know, reflecting off an aluminum folder and it's sunlight hitting the retina. They're going blind, but it's worth it. Because they'll look a little bit, look, look a little bit more red, which is nice. And your tits are just under this folder, reflective folder, and you're not, you can't even see your tits. Somebody could be stuckling on your tits and rent, you could be renting your tits. If you are, and again, with the tits, if you're like lactating, Rent out your lactating tits. Because a lot of times, sometimes, some ladies might not be able to lactate. And whether it's for their baby or whether it's for their husband or, or wife or cats and dogs, who knows? Maybe they're into like lactating tits. Who isn't? Which one of us isn't into lactating tits? Which is, you know, one of the greatest advantages of having lady tits because they lactate. But you can rent it out. A lot of times, women... Statistically, it's been proven that don't they don't use their tits like 95, 87 to 95 percent of the time. That's like basically a lifetime of not using tits. Maybe they're just carrying it around money bags and wasting it, just wasting money bags where you could be renting it, rent it. It's still yours, but like rent it. And there's no more stigma of oh yeah, they're selling their body parts. No, because that's that's diff diff. This is renting. You're only, you know, for a little, and you can do it for long periods of time too. If you're like in a coma, 
if, and you got a piece on you, let's say you got like a, you got a perfectly sized peen or a badge, or you're in a coma, let somebody fucking like ride you for six months until you come out. And next thing you know, oh, who's going to pay for this hospital bill if I don't have insurance? The ladies and the gents who've been sucking you off while you were sleeping. Those are the, those are the people who are paying for your hospital visit. But that's, you know, these are just like some of the ways we could all be making a little bit extra money. I'm just letting you know that there's a whole world out there. So don't limit yourself. You're like, yeah, I don't have a house. I don't have a car to rent out your body parts. Rent out your asshole, fam. A lot of people can't take shits out there or they like to be able to take more shits. You know what I mean? Sometimes people might need to have support shits. Ever, ever, yeah, ever have a person that needs a support shitter? Next to them is like, I, I, yeah, I shit on a regular, but if somebody were to sit next to me on the toilet, double toilets, we hold hands, we shits together, you could be renting out your shits. How many shits do you take every day? Like at least, at least one, if, you're, if your bowels are moving proper, at least one, maybe, maybe two, three, anything above three, I'd say it's probably a little bit like, you should probably get it checked out, but also you could be making bank. Forget getting it checked, but you could be making bank, taking triple shits a day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me. It's October 9th, 2024, of course. And a lot of people are like, uh, you know, I know somebody or I, either you know somebody, either you yourself or, you, or somebody you know, maybe in a line of work that entails uh, getting rid of bodies, for example, disappearing bodies. Let's say you're into that line of work for whatever odd reason, but no judgy. Work is work. An honest day's worth of work is an honest day's work of pay earned and an honest day's the work of working honestly on a daily basis and making the money and the getting the earning and the, 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 yes. So the point is, ladies and gentlemen, let's say you're into getting rid of bodies and disappearing bodies, but you're tired of the traditional ways of disappearing bodies. Oh, I got to get a hacksaw. I got to chop it up into pieces. I got to, do I start with the arm? Do I start with the legs? This guy's got a big head. How am I gonna separate the, how am I gonna sever the head from the body? These are all the questions that everybody has to deal with. So annoying. You've seen it in all your favorite movies. You've maybe encountered it in your all time favorite lived memories. And you're like, yeah, it's, it's so hard for me to be in this line of business. And especially in this day and age where like, you know, you try to get a property with enough pigs on it to be able to, you know, feed them bodies. So you get rid of, or you got to get like an alligator farm. Who has time for an alligator farm? You know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, okay, maybe I won't do the alligator. Maybe I'll just get like a regular farm. Maybe I'm not going to feed the bodies to the pigs or the alligators or the crocodiles. Maybe I'll just get like a little small size farm. And maybe I'll use like some sort of like acid or like some sort of like, you know, uh, black market, you know, black web liquid solution formula thing to like melt the bodies. And... What if that gets on you? What if that gets on you? What if, what if the fumes are like cancerous, which is not good? What if, what if like, what if you need, to, and what if there's a lot of bodies? What if there's a lot of bodies, you know, more, you gotta buy more picks, you gotta get more saws, you gotta get more sheets to clean things. Oh, it's just so much. Say less, friend, I've got you. Industrial sized blenders that are meant to just so let's say you got a body on your hand, right? You're like, oh, how do I get rid of this body? These industrial sized blenders, uh, they've got three speeds, fast, faster, even fastest, all right? You put a whole body, you're, you've done your business. I don't care how, what, whatever happened. You happen to be either in the mob. You happen to be in some sort of like, you know, some sort of like secret government agency that gets rid of bodies or whatever. And you're like, oh man, again, other, I got to lay around sheets. Oh, it's going to get messy. I'm going to have to... Wear overalls. Who likes wearing overalls? No one. So that's the thing. Get these industrial sized powered blenders and just feed the human into head first, feed, for, it doesn't matter. Does it just feed the human body into the blender? It'll just, you know, again, three speeds depending on the density. Sometimes the most you'll have to do is maybe like chop a torso in half. There you go. Chop a torso and have you like, this fella's a little bit hefty. He's a little bit, you know, husky. We say that about people. People are husky. 
Smells a little bit husky. This lady's got them tits. So maybe chop a half a torso. It's way better than chopping multiple but Oh, the hours you spent chopping up body for girl. Oh, so annoying. So industrial size blender is just feed the blender, the bodies, and I'll just create this juice, just this clear, you could, you could pour it in a toilet, flush it down, gone. Uh, you could, if you're gardening, uh, basically just pour it all in your garden. It'll be, it'll probably be good for the soil. I'm not quite sure about that, but we're, you know, you could just, you could, you could go on a highway and just like empty it out on a, on a rainy day and no one would even notice. Just empty it out. No one would even notice. You could go to find a bunch of, find a bunch of ladies who are menstruating, get amongst them, start mingling. And as soon as they start menstruating, you start menstruating. Just like, you know, wear the, you know, you know, put it in a bag and just dispense. Just dispense as soon as everybody's like, oh my God, Jill, you're so funny. Oh, there comes my period. There comes your period. High five them and just let it all out. Just let it all out and nobody would say anything. Uh, if you happen to find somebody who is dying from coughing and they're again, and they're on that stage of just like coughing kidneys and, you know, intestines and they've already got a messy surround just get in there and you start coughing a little bit pour the rest of the blended body all over the place it'll kind of like just just you know when they're not really looking just empty it out empty the bag and you're good to go no more wasting time like how many how many times do you have to make phone calls I and mean, you can't even make phone calls these days because you know you don't want anybody to like find out what your business is all about no more making phone calls at like 2, 3 a.m. You could just do it on your own, independent contracting. Oh, that's gonna make a comeback. I can feel it. How come there are no like positive cancers? You know, cause like that's the thing, you go through life and sometimes, you know, and they say that, you, you read that, right? I've, I've been reading about this shit. You've all been reading, I don't know what, what, why is it happening, who knows? multiplicity of factors that could be the, the reasons plural behind why people are catching cancers at an earlier age too they say that shit mammograms you should be getting that earlier they say that ladies in their 40s should be getting mammograms because cancer is guys you should be getting your prostate checked earlier everybody should just be getting everything checked earlier because there's so much plastic and like fumes in the air and the whatever and the agriculture and the cancers and the and the unwanted vaccines and cancers on this oh why you know and nobody's looking into it, but at the same rate, I, I am a little bit cheesed because like cancer, even like before, like before, you know, before current times, we did have like cancer was a thing that every once in a while somebody did get for whatever reason. Of course, we've, you know, we do have, you know, better ways of dealing with it today than we ever did. We're making strides, but I'm a little bit cheesed about the fact that we don't have like anomalies in the human body where you get something and it's a good thing. Like there's no good cancer. Like nobody, cause you wake up, if you get like, you know, whatever, God forbid, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want that for anybody. But again, I'm just a little bit cheesed that we don't get like positive cancer. You know, nobody wakes up with like, oh, I'm feeling faster, stronger, and smarter. I got positive cancer, schmancer. Oh, he's got the schmancers. You know, you come in there just like lifting a car over, you know, baby like, is trapped under a car. Oh, if there was only somebody with schmancer and you just walk in there, I've got the schmancers. You lift the car, save the baby, take a picture, get a key to the city, sell the key to the city. You know? Why doesn't anybody get that? Why doesn't anybody fucking get like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like, I'm, I got schman, I'm gonna run extremely fast because I got the schmancers. Oh. Because you've seen people with, like, real cancer will be, like, walking slower and, you know, which sucks. They'll just, like, oh, it's the, their immune system is compromised or whatever. It sucks. Our hearts go out. But you don't get, like, positive cancer, which should. If, if they say everything has a, you know, positive or equal reaction. Every action has a reaction to whatever they say in physics. But if there's cancer, which is, like, not good, why isn't there positive cancer? Can we make that happen? Can we give people that? Positive cancer, maybe we call it some like, you know, schmancer, schmancer. 
or the or the gift. He's got the he's got the gift or the schmatz. He's got the schmatzer. Oh, her hair is looking so good for a 55-year-old. She's, oh, oh, some ladies might be seeing a little bit of thinning, a little bit of less volume. Oh, she's got, oh, so much volume. I wonder what she's got. Shh, don't say anything. She's got the schmancer. Or say everything because she's got like, a positive thing. You want to kind of like spread the word. How do you get that luscious hair with so much volume? She's got schmancer. Oh, she's so lucky. Solving mathematical equations. Hey, how did that happen? He's got the schmancer. Why? Why don't we get that? Although there is a downside to that as well, because like if you do get like red cancer and you, you know, battle it, you go into like a fucking, you know, sumo wrestling competition with the cancers, you come out on the other side, everybody's like, yes, Jeffrey beat the cancer. He beat the beast, he beat the Big C, yes, Jeffrey, put a bell on you, cause yo, man, you'll say that, which is a good thing, there's like a, you know, celebration period, but if you get the schmancer and you're like all of a sudden fucking like, you know, performing at a next level, fucking like performance level, and you're and all of a sudden you lose that shit, it would kind of be a downer, it would kind of be a downer, you no longer go, oh, can you lift this car, there's a baby, I wonder, I know someone who's got the schmancer and can save the baby, come on over here, Mike, and Mike's like, X nay on the schmanza. Come on, Mike, you got this. Mike's just all right. I'm gonna give it a oh, There's a hernia, right there. No longer with the schmanza. Oh, Mike, what happened? Lose your schmanza there, Mike. Is a regular guy like the rest of us. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Join me next time on Glad You Made It. It's been another social production. I'll be here again Friday. Where you can find these videos on Instagram, follow me there, subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out patreon.com slash Until next time, keep on queefing and we'll keep on queefing together. Get out of here.